So in this episode, we are gonna look at our 3D environment. It's called 3D Firex. We are not gonna dig very deep into it, not in this episode. I think we'll make two episodes. So this is just um, look at the workflow and how you can program a part uh, or a model um, so that you can take something like this, a material, just a flat piece of material and turn it into a useless part, but a beautiful part nonetheless. Um, and this is going to be imported by a 3D file and it takes like two clicks and you program this. So it's very, very easy to do. Let's have a look. Do you just feel like there is no air left to breathe? Do you just wanna to be left outside the grave? It's all for sure, I didn't know. I wonder what it meant to be. If I let go and let it flow, I think there's more to see. I just need a break. I'll take what you need. I just need Okay, so back in iGEMS, we are going to the tab CAM and our 3D 5X, which will bring up the selection of machine and material. And right now, we don't have to think about the thickness, so you just want to add the correct material. So this was aluminium, let's hit OK. That will take us to our 3D environment. So it opens a new window uh, but it's still in the same software. So uh, for you who hasn't been working in a 3D environment, this is our ground plane, which we will sit. This is basically our table in a 3D environment. So to zoom, you use the scroll just uh, as in the 2D environment. You can select, well, you can't select anything now because we don't have any Thing on the drawing but you do that with the left button and the right button you click it and you hold it down and you can drag it and you can pivot this or well, this whole environment or this table so if I click and drag back here up and down it behaves in a certain way if I do it here it does it in a certain way so you're basically picking a handle and you're moving that handle in the 3d environment and if you're lost in space, you can also click on this box up here, which will bring us to the front. We can click on any of these sites here. Uh, scroll, bring that back. And also by pushing the wheel, uh, the scrolling wheel down, you can pan the drawing. So those are some basic navigation skills you need to know. So down to the right here, we have some other settings. It's mostly visual settings. So here is just how you can, you can save views. So this view, for example, uh, you can save and you can restore them. And this is just if you want to show, if you want to have the model visible, toolpath visible, so you can um, toggle between visible and, and uh, invisible. Um, so those are those settings. But let's look at what we have up here. Under the iGEMS logo, we can open, I'm just gonna open the useless part that we were cutting in the machine earlier. And this part is linked in the description below. So please go ahead and download that if you want to, and you can try it out yourself. And while you're at it, just hit that subscribe button and you will get notified when we upload anything onto YouTube. So 
In this CAD tab, we won't look at anything in this video. It's basically, you can just draw things and you can make primitives, which are super simple 3D objects. Uh, so bear in mind that this 3D 5X is not for designing your own 3D geometry. It's more like you import a step file or I guess file and you can apply tool paths to them. So we will probably look at some of these features in the next video. Um, tools, same with that. We will look at that in the next video. This is just for beginners and just to show the workflow, uh, what we're doing. So we imported this um, geometry and if we had to cam, there are two ways to apply tool paths to this. So either you can hit the auto, which is, this might look like a complex part to program, but it really isn't. Uh, it's, it's just two shapes uh, that are twisted a little bit. So we can use our auto tool path on this, but on really complex parts, you cannot use your auto tool path. Then you have to pick your own curves and then apply the tool paths to them manually. So in this video, we will look at the auto. So I promised two clicks, right? So one click, open the auto, and here are our lead-ins and lead-out values, basically same as in our 2D. Um, and we can just hit OK. So that's two clicks, and there it is. It's programmed. So these red, uh, red lines here are vectors just to show the cut angle of uh, the jet and the thickness of the material, which is what would base the speed on the machine is based on the top of this contour. So the, basically it's a red uh, section of the line. So it's blue up here and it becomes red. So the speed and thickness is calculated from this point whoop, down to this point. So that's our thickness. So that's why we didn't have to pick a thickness in the machine settings before. But there is one problem to this uh, auto, at least for this part, because if you look here, this yellow indicator is our lead in and we have a circular lead in here, but that's gonna cut into this material, right? It's gonna chip out a little bit here. So we might wanna move this. So we head into our tool paths and the outer tool path, it basically made two tool paths. And we have, as always, automatically place first the inner contour and then the outer contour. But this was the inner contour. So we have a button right here, select start. I click on that and I can place it, let's place it here maybe. And this is our lead in, how, where we wanna put it and in which direction and how long we wanna put it. So the red circle, if we hit enter, it will place a lead that is this long. If we click, however, it will place it wherever uh, the cursor is. So maybe we want to have it like 90 degrees from the edge and, and we we'll wanna have it to the red circle. So we do this and enter and then lead out the same thing that will place a lead right there. We also see it's a, if I go to the top there, it's a tilted piercing. So we will cut, we will start cutting tilted. Maybe that's, that's the blue line right there. And that's it. Uh, close this. If we wanna bring the rapids, so it's gonna cut the inner first, then it's gonna go up all the way here, 
back there and down if we want to shorten these. Maybe it's not that important on just two cuts, but let's say you had a hundred cuts. You don't want to go up all the way. You want to minimize that. So we have our rapids and right here is the distance. So we can set a value here and just click distance and that will bring all the uh, rapids down to this distance above the part. So this is 20 millimeters right now. And that looks good. So we can create this. We can also simulate it. Let's let's do that first and see that there are no problems. So in here we have our tilter displayed without our height sensor. We have the model. And to the left we have our code. So we can click anywhere on the code and we can jog up and down with the down arrow and up arrow. We see the movements of the this. We also have a timeline down here. And there's also a built-in tilt indicator, if you want to call it that. Um, let's say our head, our cutting head, the maximum angle is 46 degrees. So if there would be a angle in the code uh, that would exceed 46 degrees, there would be a highlight. So let's say right here, there would be an area. If this was tilting more than 46 degrees, there would be a red area here. So we can go to that area, look at the part. Okay, it's cutting too much here. We might want to change something in the part. Uh, and we also have a collision detection. And that's the same thing if, if the nozzle is hitting the material or if anything in the uh, simulator head is, is hitting the material, we will also see a red area in this. Um, so this is very inexpensive way of uh, detecting pro problems. Instead of breaking your nozzles, you can do it in here. And there are also some settings here where you can uh, hide or display sides, toolpaths. Maybe we don't want to see the toolpaths, so we can go here. Um, and that's it. So close this and create. We can set our part name, quantity, pretty much the same as the 2D environment. OK. And we want to click done here to select everything. And that's it, folks, as programmed. So we can process this, select it, and we can generate our code and save it. Let's save it as a useless part. Save. And this file is just just load that into the machine and you can cut this. So that's the super simple way of cutting 3D parts in iGEMS. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.